where nothing up there, then way, way, way down here, there's something. We have this sort of palisaded, uh, granulomatous, dermatitis look. Mm -hmm. um, I like that however, you added the word look. Good. However, in the middle, I note that this amorphous material is somewhat pale. Um, it doesn't really look mucinous. It doesn't really look darker like I would think with fibrin. So I am sort of cluing into the entity that I never want to miss. I've never seen it before, but I'm always afraid of missing because at the periphery of this um, uh, amorphous area, you've got kind of these large epithelioid cells that look a little bit atypical, large yeah. nuclei, some hyperchromasia. Um, it's very deep. On my mind is a differential that may be in, that included other entities like deep GA. Absolutely. Or, or um, in a rheumatoid nodule, but it's it's not typical for that. It's got these other mixed features, so I'm, I'm worried about whether this would be an epithelioid um, sarcoma, and I, I did a little reading, and it, in terms of staining, if I wanted to work this up, I read that INI, loss of INI1 is seen in over 90% yes. of, um, of, of these entities, so I would use that for confirmation. Very good. Yeah, so in the old days, they back when there were very few stains, people would say this is positive for keratin and vimentin. And you guys all know how much I hate vimentin. But but in the old days, it was fine because there was not much else. So, uh, you know, carcinomas are often keratin positive and vimentin negative. Although when carcinomas get spindly and look like sarcomas, they tend to start picking up vimentin. So in any case, I don't think there's any need to use vimentin for anything in, in bone and soft tissue pathology in modern times. But but in the old days, that was the classic finding. And then people also described that CD34 is positive in these in the majority of cases, which is something that carcinomas are, are usually not positive for, right? But we know that CD34 is also a pretty nonspecific marker. It can stain a lot of stuff. So thankfully, now we have a better marker, and that's INI1, or also known as SMARC-B1. And what you'll see is it's a stain that is lost. It, normal nucleated cells should express it. This tumor and a growing list of other tumors uh, unrelated to this, have loss of INI1. So, um, and there are other members of the SMARC SMARC family, uh, like SMARC A2 and SMARC A4. Other types of, of uh, malignancies can have loss of those markers. So, this this kind of whole family of proteins that can get inactivated and lost, and then drive tumor growth. And so, you can read more about that. That's a long, complicated discussion. But in this setting, um, I do not like to use INI1 as my main screening stain, mainly because technically I find that it's kind of hard to work. It sometimes has a uh, weak internal control. I'm actually currently working on trying to, to improve a, a validation of that um, to try to get a better staining because it's something that I've always found is kind of a struggle to get it to work really well and crisp staining. And when I'm using a screening stain, I want a crisp, strong stain that works very, very reliably, right? So I like to use, if I, if I look at something and I think it's maybe deep GA or rheumatoid nodule, but then I look closer and I see the cells are a lot bigger, a lot more atypical. They tend to have, some of the cells are a little dark, but some are very pale, white, kind of vesicular chromatin. That's a really typical uh, morpho cytomorphology for epithelioid sarcoma. So these, I think, are much more atypical and large than GA or rheumatoid nodule. But what about these up here? I mean, these are uh, subtle. That, those cells look relatively bland and not very atypical to my eye. So if you, if you have any doubt, just do the stains. It's real easy to, to make this distinction, okay? I mean, to, to do stains to help you here, because I do feel like I, there are cases that even as a soft tissue pathologist, on, a, on some areas, I'm like, boy, that doesn't look very atypical. Look, look at that. And the cells are a little bigger, but I mean, it can be subtle. So so in any case, I like to use a pancytic keratin and an EMA as my my uh, go-to. I used to just use keratin, but I did see a single case once of epithelioid sarcoma that was basically completely negative for keratin on the biopsy, and it was EMA positive. And on the, the full excision, there was some focal keratin, but basically it was mostly keratin negative, which is terrifying. But it was diffusely EMA positive, and it had loss of INI1. So um, the center sometimes, I mean, look, there is kind of degenerated collagen and fibrin in here. There's also some mucin up here. So it could mimic GA or a rheumatoid nodule because of that, but classically the center will also have necrotic tumor cells. So that's something we don't really see a lot of dying actual ghosted out tumor cells. 
in rheumatoid nodular GA because they're not tumors, they're histiocytic processes. But I, I feel like these, sometimes epithelial sarcoma is very straightforward and obviously atypical. I have seen some terrifyingly subtle cases though. So my general rule is, is if I look and I can't decide or if I have any doubt, I just add those stains on to sleep well at night, okay? Because, and usually when I've done those stains and it was just a rheumatoid nodule or GA, it's negative, you know? Like most of the time, if I thought, if I have to think about it though, I'm like, maybe I should just do the stain. All right, so, so it, you know, it's an important thing to keep in mind because if it's not on your radar, it's really easy to miss this. If you don't know that there's a sarcoma that's really rare that can grow like a rheumatoid nodule, then it's easy to look at this and say, oh, rheumatoid nodule, right? And they're clinically often in, in the extremities of, of young adults or kids sometimes, unfortunately. These tend to occur in younger people, although I've also seen a case in the finger of a 90-year-old patient before. So I've seen, I've seen a wide range of, of ages and, um, and presentations. So, um, so just so you know, that's, that's possible. All right. So the, um, the, uh, the presence of atypia is the really important key, but, oh yes, they, they usually occur in, in young adults or sometimes kids. And also they tend to be a kind of nonspecific nodule on the distal extremity, hands or feet, um, uh, you know, wrist, ankle, that kind of area. And then they um, sometimes will ulcerate. So sometimes they'll present as like an ulcer that keeps recurring and doesn't heal. I've seen cases where they've, you know, done IND, incision and drainage. They've tried to debride it. Then someone finally is like, you know, a year later, like maybe we should send some of this for pathology. And it turns out the whole time it was epithelioid sarcoma. So it's a terrifying case because it clinically presents in the kind of person that you would not expect to have a cancer. It doesn't look like a typical skin cancer or a typical soft tissue sarcoma in the way that it presents clinically. Microscopically, it sometimes looks very bland and has a growth pattern that can look like rheumatoid nodule or GA. So for many reasons, it's a very scary tumor and it's very, very rare. I, I only probably see it maybe once a year, sometimes even less than that. So uh, it's, it's quite uncommon, thankfully, because it's a terrible tumor that often has a tendency, even with complete excision, it has a tendency to recur and have kind of satellite type lesions and in transit metastases even after you excise it, tends to grow back and have satellites, and then it can metastasize the regional lymph nodes. And uh, the last time I read about it, the, the prognosis is, is about 50% of patients eventually die from disease. And I think that does depend on how long you follow the patient. Sometimes patients can have a protracted clinical course where the tumor kind of has a relentless recurrence. So it's horrible because it, uh, it has uh, such an insidious and persistent kind of um, uh, growth pattern. And because it's um, it's an easy thing to overlook and miss. So I, I like to harp on this entity because of all those reasons, it's a terrible pitfall. And in this case, you can tell this is an excision. This patient had had a biopsy before because look over here, we've got some suture granuloma and scar. So this was part of a, a complete excision or maybe an amputation specimen uh, for this uh, tumor. So epithelioid sarcoma. All right, guys, uh, as usual, we went way over time, but thank you for those of you who were able to stick around. And to everyone watching online, thanks for watching. Hope you learned something and hope you enjoyed. Have a great day. Thanks, Dr. Gog. You're welcome. Um.